Hey friends, welcome back. This lesson is all about how to soften our resistance so that we can bypass the sense of lack. And when we bypass the sense of lack, we can re-enter the realm of abundance, the realm of infinity, the realm of endless expansion, the realm of endless love, of unconditional love. And as soon as we do that, our life changes instantly. Our experience state, our feeling state changes, which is most important, which is the most direct, immediate benefit. But with that, since state of being does generate our circumstances, we are actually in a vibratory state where we shift into a parallel reality where it seems like better things are attracted to our experience. What does better mean? Better simply means experiences that are more representative of who we are inside of our true self. Uh, so our heart's desires will be more effortlessly made manifest and reflected in what we call the physical imagination or physical reality. If we are stuck in a state of resistance, in any form of resistance, which always is based on the idea that there is lack or that lack could exist or that something happened that was wrong or that caused lack, etc. As soon as we're in a lack belief, in a lack thought, in a lack perspective, instantaneously you'll feel your feeling state shut off, it closes down, it feels contracted, it feels unpleasant, it feels nasty. You don't feel quite as connected and free and effortless as you normally do. You don't necessarily perceive that you're unconditionally loved, unconditionally supported, that everything is possible, that you can generate whatever you desire to generate. You feel more like a victim of life rather than an empowered consciousness or a creator of life. So there's this common myth. Let's, let's clear out this myth before we continue. The myth is that if there is, if we're in a state of resistance and we somehow ignore that feeling of resistance or the thought of resistance and reinsert a thought or a perspective or a focus of consciousness that feels more holistically positive, that feels more aligning, that feels more empowering. There is this belief out there in the field of spirituality and psychology that that is called, among other terms, spiritual bypassing. So spiritual bypassing is the idea that we would were to avoid, that we avoid things that don't feel good because we don't want to not feel good. Now that's a great statement. We don't want to not feel good. It means that the system as it's put in place by higher consciousness is working perfectly because every time we don't feel good, it wants us to not like that because it allows us to wake up and change our course. So, or our course of thought, our course of believing, or our course of action. So it works. It's a, it's a good thing that we don't like feeling bad. However, the idea of spiritual bypassing is that we, were, that we would avoid those negative feelings over and over again, and that we would simply never get to the heart of the matter. Now, while I agree that there are people that do that, I do not believe any of you, the adepts of this academy, are really heavily into that. I understand that you, as much as myself, don't necessarily enjoy bad feelings as much as you enjoy good feelings or in alignment feelings. However, I trust that there is some level of maturity present in you, that there's some level of experience that is gained here, and that you do wish to see the beliefs that are out of alignment. So it's not that we're avoiding when it comes to softening resistance and bypassing lack. It's not that we are bypassing the core belief that makes us feel bad. It is that we allow ourselves to first enter a different vibratory state from within which we have access to much more higher, clever, intelligent, solution-oriented thought waves. Literally, whatever vibratory state you are in, whatever feeling state you are in, you will have access to the thoughts that correspond to that level of intelligence. Now, if from that level of resistance, from that lower, shall we say, level of intelligence, when we try to figure out what it is that we are believing in that is rooted in the idea that lack exists, sometimes it can get really hard and difficult and feel like it causes more contraction and more resistance 
if we simply keep working on that negative level with that negative level, point of view, or vibratory state. So in order to actually positively work with the negative beliefs and actually look at them from a holistic, more transcendent place, we need to first change our frequency. And then quite automatically, quite quickly, quite rapidly and intelligently, we will suddenly penetrate the previous issue that we just already transcended so that it won't happen again. So whenever you're in a state of resistance, soften your resistance before you try to do anything with it. Test this out for a little bit. So resistance comes up. There's this lack of belief. Let's say um, I want to go on a trip to Hawaii, but I don't have enough money to do so. You feel resistance. Your dream or your desire, your passion is inspiring you to look up things regarding Hawaii, to start thinking, to start creating the idea of moving to or visiting Hawaii. However, the thoughts also come in based off of circumstances, oh, but you know, I want to go to Hawaii in about a month and I only have $3,000 in my bank account and I need to pay all these bills and I need to pay my groceries and I need to support my spouse. And I don't have any necessarily obvious source of additional income coming in in the next month. So I don't think it's going to work out. Now, while this is a perfectly valid logical reason and way of seeing things, it's not exactly the way a creator sees life. A creator sees life in the following way. Resistance comes up, such as the lack of belief based in the lack of belief of, I don't have the means to do what I desire to do when I desire to do so. We collapse, we contract, we feel resistance to what? To our desire. What is our desire? It's our true self. Desire connects us to our true self. So we're literally resisting who we are who we are inspired to be is being dampened. We dampen our spirits by believing in lack. And this is totally fine. This is totally, it's not natural, but it's totally conditioned. It's totally automatic. It makes sense from our human point of view, Lim linear time-based point of view. However, what we want to do is we want to, first of all, feel better so that we are in a higher state of being so that we have access to more solution-based, abundance-based principles, thoughts, insights and creative principle that we can activate in that higher state of being. So it doesn't help us to stay with the facts of the physical circumstances as they are. It doesn't help anyone if they actually want to create a trip to Hawaii to keep being stuck in the thought, I only have $3,000 in my bank account and that is about to run out in about two and a half weeks. And I have no clear other way that I perceive within which or through which I can generate the financial abundance that I seemingly need to make that trip possible. So a creator does not get stuck in that state of thinking. A creator remembers, the adept remembers, that anything lack-based is not true. This does not mean you no longer make logical choices to an extent, but it does mean that your vibratory state comes first before anything else. Now, if all is said and done, and you have done all you can do vibrationally, and still the money does not show up and the trip to Hawaii does not seem to occur, then that is where faith and trust and letting go comes in. Still within the frequency of knowing that, oh, well, this is simply not the time right now for this to occur, something even better and in greater alignment wants to actually arise for me. So you see, even when seeming disappointment happens on the level of the manifest, we as a creator, we as the adept are still prioritizing how we experience that moment. We are still prioritizing our perspective of that moment rather than what actually seems to occur in the physical moment. Why? Because we have learned that we don't take our cue from physical circumstances. We give our cue to physical circumstances, regardless of what appears over and over again. We cultivate the habit, not the habit, but the intention, the decision, the choice, the empowering choice to overwhelm our experience with our chosen vibratory state of being. And that is not one of lack. I assume that you prefer to feel the infinite abundance of your being and feel infinitely inseparable and connected to the all that is greater God consciousness, rather than to feel that you're limiting and lacking and isolated from all that is, and that you don't have anything at your disposal that you can use to fulfill your dreams, etc. 
So obviously we all prefer abundance. So that will be our chosen response to any type of event, even if from the traditional point of view, it would be labeled as disappointment or failure. We don't buy into these terms anymore. We don't care if things seem to fail or disappoint or are postponed or don't work out or don't manifest quite in a way that we thought they could or would or wanted them to. We don't care. We don't care what other people have to say about circumstances. We don't care what they think about circumstances. We don't care what our parents taught us about circumstances. We choose to believe what we want to believe based on how it makes us feel. More on this in the next lesson. For now, simply know that you always have choice to feel how you want to feel and that with a higher feeling state comes immediate access to higher thinking thoughts. So this is why we wish to soften resistance when there is a lot of resistance in our system. If we're collapsed and we're contracted and we feel stuck, it doesn't help us to stay in that mode and to observe the physical finances and the physical circumstances and to base our state of being further off of the circumstances. What helps is is to somehow ease, smooth ourselves into a higher vibratory state of being. Again, some people have termed this as bypassing, but I don't believe this is true. I don't believe one can truly bypass anything because anything that is bypassed will show up again if it actually has to be looked at. If not, then it's simply let go of. So you can't, it's a mechanical impossibility to bypass something. This obviously is not me suggesting that you never look at a negative belief. Definitely look at the beliefs, but you have to look at the belief from a higher vibratory state of being, otherwise you won't be actually seeing the full extent of that belief. You won't be able to see it and walk around it and look at it from all angles and see how it no longer serves you. If you're in the negative state generated by the negative belief, you can only sort of hint at the negative belief. You can only sort of get a glimpse of it, see it from one angle. You don't have the full freedom yet to walk around it. You don't have the full spacious, high frequency wisdom to see it from all angles. You don't really know what else is out there for you to draw from instead. You have nothing to replace this negative belief with. All because you're contracted and you've dampened your spirit with lack and you don't feel good about yourself. Now, if you're not feeling good about your existence right here, right now, and about existence in general, then you will not have access to higher thinking, higher intelligent, solution-based, abundance-based ideas and perspectives. So you're in resistance. First of all, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna let go of focusing on the thing that you focused upon that cost you the lack feeling. Even though you know it's not about the thing, it's coming from the belief about the thing, but simply for a moment withdraw from focusing upon the thing that triggers the negative belief that causes the lack and the sense of resistance and stuckness. What do you do? Instead, you focus on something else. You use this, Im, Im, um, this amazing tool that is not even a tool, it's really just the nature of reality, which we have labeled imagination. Imagination is consciousness itself, having the ability to transport itself and to focus into being certain, um, certain desired experiences. You can use your imagination to tune into any reality, any space, any time, to connect to actual places and actual experiences and actual events and to create seemingly new ones as well. So learn to use your imagination wisely and use it to soften your resistance when you are in stark resistance. So you're in a in a moment of strong resistance, what do you do? You shift your attention to something that brings you or triggers the experience of joy, of abundance, of feeling amazing about yourself, seeing how good you are doing, seeing how things are possible, seeing how things are flowing for your higher good, seeing how life is taking care of you and is supporting you, seeing how you are the creator, not the victim, etc. So any type of thought, any type of perspective on your life, any type of even object, permission slip, or um, th something coming up in your future that does excite you, that's already scheduled, that you do believe will happen, or something that happened yesterday that was an indication or proof of how well you are doing, and how that is an indication that the trip to Hawaii must also occur because you are always supported and you see that based off of your past few experiences, when you accelerate, anything is possible. 
So even though you don't perceive the finances yet, suddenly you've shifted your consciousness from, oh, I am presently lacking finances to, hey, two weeks ago, I shifted my vibration and suddenly something impossible happened. Two days later, I did the same thing and something impossible happened. Two days later, again, I did the same thing and something impossible happened again. This system is working. The mechanism based on these past experiences is working. And now you've shifted your focus into focusing something on something that is life affirming, abundance affirming, creation affirming, not denying and lack based. And so you start to feel good because you start to align your vibratory state with the actual state of your higher consciousness, with the way that it sees things. And so in this higher state of consciousness, from this higher state of being, you suddenly have access to higher thoughts, greater creativity, greater spaciousness, greater ability to utilize imagination freely and positively. And now you feel confident that you don't even have to look at the physical circumstances. You know, you know that already something is put in motion that at the perfect timing, especially if you have faith and trust and don't despair, that at the perfect timing, this will click into your experience. This particular parallel frame of reality will hit the slide, will hit the position of your uh, light projector of your consciousness and you will see that perfect reality appear to you in no time or in perfect time in that sense. So suddenly you're using different experiences from the past or imaginations towards the future or any other type of thought about your present amazingness and trust infusing uh, perspectives. You're shifting your consciousness into these holistic points of view that are in alignment with the greater truth of spirit, of consciousness, of creation, of existence, so that you start to feel good. Now you're softening your resistance, you see? By simply shifting your imagination, you are, and what you affirm, and what you point to, and what you refer to, and what you believe in, you start to shift your overall vibratory state of being. This is what you want to do. This is how you bypass the lack state, enter into the abundant state, have the immediate benefits of that, and as a side effect, you're actually able to look at the thought that triggered the negative resistance in the first place but now you're able to look at it from an already transcendent point of view that has access to way more wisdom and angles and can actually see the entirety of that belief, where it comes from perhaps, what it is based in, and how it's no longer serving you. When you spot a belief and you can see from all angles that it no longer serves you, the belief is let go of automatically. You only believe in the things that you believe will somehow benefit you and be of service. So once you get that it's not of service, from a higher state of being especially, it's easier, way easier to see it from that higher state of being, then the belief is let go of, or the belief lets go of you in a sense, and you are able to move on and never have to experience that particular angle of resistance again, because you've now actually resolved it and moved on from it. So when you feel intense resistance, the first thing you wanna do is soften that resistance. Shift your attention, snap out of your negative state focus because from that negative focal state, you can never really truly transcend the belief. You have to first avoid it for a little bit, first ignore it for a little bit, first bypass it in some way that works for you in that moment. Just get to know yourself on that vibrational level, start to become a master of your frequency, start to be able to shift around using imagination and consciousness without denying anything that happened, without denying that you have negative beliefs, but simply for that moment putting it on pause and first working on shifting your frequency. Usually working on it for about a minute using conscious creative, creative imagination is enough of a time frame to fully shift out from the negative feeling state of unconscious automatic focusing on lack, 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 to making a conscious effort to get out of that state, to keep returning to abundance, abundance, infinity, endlessness, worthiness, amazingness, everything is possibleness, etc. until about a minute later, you feel grounded. I would almost say totally grounded in the new vibratory upward spiraling state of consciousness. Now from this upward spiraling state of consciousness, anything is possible. And you will know this, you will feel this, you will feel connected to the infinite abundance of life. And now, if it still feels relevant, you will look at, hey, why was I feeling that resistance? And then you will start to see those beliefs. And you can use the previous lessons techniques or four step program to move through those negative beliefs. But now you'll have the higher state of clarity to do so way more easily, effortlessly and holistically in a grounded way. So 
first shift your attention to something more abundant, something more life affirming, so that you can ease your vibratory state, bypass lack, bypass resistance, and be in a state of feeling really good. And from this state, everything else will be shown to you effortlessly and things will start to come to you immediately, the universe will start to respond to your new vibratory state instantaneously. And that's what we want. We want that positive two-way communication with the rest of ourselves to be in alignment, to be affirming and empowering, not disempowering. So enjoy this process. The homework for this lesson is simply to repeat this lesson um, maybe, maybe one or two more times before you start your next lesson. And as always, feel free to write down a paragraph or two on the things that you've noticed as you listen to this lesson and the things that you notice as you ease your vibration. And I do want you to state the particulars of what helps you shift your frequency so that the next time you're in a heavy state of resistance, you can uh, have this list with you or maybe this note on your iPhone, for example, or your iPad or your computer or just on a post-it note on your fridge, but write down as you're practicing easing your vibratory state into one of holistic abundance rather than resistance. Notice the points of view, notice the permission slips, notice the meditations or the exercises or the imaginations that particularly seem to be helpful in general for you to shift yourself out of a state of heavy resistance into a state of intense bliss and abundance. Um, why? Because this helps you to remember when you are in a state of resistance and you don't have access to high thinking thoughts, you completely forget what worked for you the last time, or many people do. That's because you're not in the same frequency state that you were in when things actually worked out again. So you got to, in a sense, write these things down. It, it's really helpful. Write down specific notes as to what you do exactly or what you think of or what you imagine or what you believe or what mantra you repeat or what video you look at or what book you read etc and you write down exactly what works for you in those states to shift from resistance to abundance and as you notice this more and more keep writing them down over the course of your life and this will help you to always keep a high state of being or at least most of the time so that's about it and feel free to share your experiences and I would actually love it if you could share these specifics, these particular notes of how you personally have learned to shift your frequency and what works best for you in the study group because this way everyone can benefit and we can pick up new ideas of how to shift our vibratory state at will. Thank you masters of your frequency. Thank you adepts. Thank you lovers. Thank you friends. I appreciate you. Have a great day. Thank you.